This episode of All In with Pastor Jordan Easley has been made possible by the generous support of viewers like you. Welcome to All In with Pastor Jordan Easley. Today's message is about to begin, and we invite you to prepare your heart and mind to hear an inspiring message from God's Word. We hope and pray for God to speak to you today as you seek to live your life all in for Jesus Christ. And now, from First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Tennessee, here is Pastor Jordan Easley. You know, it really is a privilege to be a part of the family of God, isn't it? It's also a privilege to have a copy of the Word of God, and I hope you have your Bible today. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 5. I want to encourage you to follow along, to read along, but to also take notes as the Lord leads you uh, to write some things down today, unpacking God's Word out of Matthew chapter 5. You know, we're talking about the mission of God and also the mission of the church. And over the last couple of weeks, we've narrowed down our mission to three key phrases that you know as love God, find community, and make a difference. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about loving God and talked about that is the foundation of our mission. And it's also the first step in accomplishing our mission. We as the church will never be right unless we as individuals love God right. Amen. We've got to love God correctly if we're going to be used of God in a great way. We saw that really loving God is a decision that we make. We decide if we're going to love the Lord with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. It's a decision that we make. And that decision to love God is what changes your position with God. And when your position is changed with God, we've seen that your reflection will change for God. So what starts with loving him ends by making a difference for him. And making a difference is the last of the three phrases of our mission statement. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's begin by just simply asking a question of ourselves. Can we honestly say in this moment that we are living a life that's making a difference for God? Are you making a difference for God, for his kingdom right now? We're going to see Jesus speaking about the importance of this in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 14. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. You know, in the scriptures, Jesus used two metaphors to show us how we as a church and how we as followers of Christ should make a difference with our life. He told us that we should be salt. Do you remember that? He said we should also be light. Both of these things make a difference, but in completely different ways. You see, salt is discreet. It's, it's something that preserves. When salt is applied on, on food or meat, you know that it quickly dis- disappears. It, it also is something that, that is unseen by some people. And so when you talk about living your life for Christ as salt, it's really talking about just living a life that's been changed by God. When you're salt, it's, it's something that has changed your inward parts. It speaks of our devotion to God. Salty lives are lives that are living of great character as a Christian. The world may not see it, but God sees it, and you know that you've been changed. So that's salt. But light, on the other hand, it isn't discreet. It's very obvious. It's very hard to hide light in the darkness, is it not? Uh, light isn't one of those things that's on the inside. Light is always something on the outside. So when Jesus talks about us living our lives as light, he's talking about speaking and preaching and living outwardly and interacting in such a way where it's obvious and the world can see that you're different. The light that is displayed in your life and my life, it ought to reveal and illuminate the truth of who God is and what God has done in our heart. Here's what Jesus said to his disciples 2,000 years ago. And here's what Jesus is saying to us today. He's saying, live your life as light, shine bright, share the gospel, make a difference. He tells us you are the light of the world. You know, many times we read verses like that, or we hear phrases like that, and we really don't understand what those words meant at the time they were spoken. I mean, we hear the phrase, you are the light of the world or lights of the world. And in the first century, 
we don't realize that that was actually a recognizable phrase that people would have known. And in fact, it was a title that was given by, by Jews to certain distinguished rabbis. Only the elite rabbis, I'm talking about the top tier of the religious leaders of that day, were referred to by this title. People like Rabbi Judah or Rabbi Jochanan. I mean, you can look these guys up and you'll see that they were referred to and really known as two different things, the lamps of the universe and the lights of the world. These guys were known as the lights of the world long before Jesus ever preached the Sermon of the Mount on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. So knowing that history, you've got to wonder what the scribes and the Pharisees must have been thinking when they heard Jesus standing on the hillside, looking over the crowd saying, you are the light of the world. They had to be thinking, no, this guy's mistaken. The light of the world is that rabbi or this rabbi. But he wasn't talking to the religious elite in that moment. He wasn't referring to the uber-religious or the super-Jews. No, he was talking to a handful of rejects and teenage dropouts and fishermen alongside the, the, the edge of the water who had decided to go all in with Jesus as their Messiah and to follow him. I love the fact that when Jesus says, you are the light of the world, that he was talking to people like us. This wasn't a metaphor for, for a certain exclusive exclusive, distinguished group of people. No, this was a metaphor that relates to all of us who love Jesus, all of us who believe in Christ, all of us who have dedicated our life to following him. Listen, if you know Jesus today, he would say, you are the light of the world. And here's what, here's what I believe the Lord wants to show us today from his scripture. You ready? He's saying, we are light because Christ is light. You can't be light without him. In fact, Jesus said in John 8, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. You know who he's talking to here? You know who he's talking about? He's talking about us. He says, because I am light and because I am in you, you as a result are light. Do you get it? Hey, hey get this today. You can't be in Christ and in darkness. I'm going to say it again. You can't be in Christ and living in darkness. You can't because the light of Jesus that's in you is a light that the Bible says penetrates the darkness and prevents you from walking in the dark. Every person in this room has a flashlight. You may not have it on you, but you have one. You're familiar with a flashlight. And I think that that's good because a flashlight is something that makes a difference in darkness. Would you agree with that today? I want you to say amen. A flashlight makes a difference in darkness, all right? This is crowd participation. Say amen one more time. Amen. We all know that. That's very obvious. But here's what I want you to understand. This statement is only true if three things are also true. And it applies to us today. So I want you to write these things down. The first thing that must be true in order for that to happen is this. The light must be turned on. The light must be turned on. I mean, read that verse again, Jesus speaking in John chapter eight. What does he say? I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. When Jesus was born, you may remember he was referred to as light. Back in the, back in the Christmas story, I'm talking Luke chapter two stuff. He was called a light for revelation. Because they knew in that moment that he was the Messiah. He was the son of God. He was the one that they had been waiting for. And yet here we are, fast forward 30 years to John chapter 8. Jesus is now speaking of himself. And he doesn't call himself a light for revelation like at the time of his birth. No, he says, oh, I am the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. He affirmed the fact that he alone can illuminate the darkness. That he alone can change a person's heart and soul and eternal destination. He said, when you follow me, you walk away from the darkness and you walk into the light. He's saying, I came to change your life and I came so that you could be light. But that will never happen, check this out, if you remain in the dark. Do you get this today? That's Jesus talking in John 14. In verse 12, he said, truly I tell you, the one who believes in me, will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. You say, Jordan, how am I, 
Am I supposed to do greater works than these? Can I tell you? Your life will only do greater works through the power of God and through the person of the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus said, I'm going to the Father, he was quick to send you a helper. And you have that helper. And he is your guide. And he is the power source you need in order to accomplish your mission for him. You say, well, how do I stay connected to him as my power source? I'm tired of plugging in for a couple of weeks and then disconnecting. How do I stay connected to the power of who God is? May I offer you a simple acrostic that may help you with that this week? It's simply the word power. And it's in your notes, by the way. But the P for power, is, is, it stands for pray for his power. If you want the power of God, I believe this is a great place to start. You got to pray for the power of God. Someone once said a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. And you got to think about that. God gives us access to his power, but, but if we don't ask for his power, why should we expect it? But he gives us access to his power, and that access comes through the prayers of his people. Not only is P for pray, O is for obey. The O stands for obey his word. See, I believe obedience is what activates the potential of God's power in our life. Obedience. I say this all the time that God blesses obedience. He doesn't bless disobedience. And so if we know that, we believe that, I believe we should be people that are pursuing Christ and really really obeying the Lord. In 1 Samuel, he puts it this way. He said, to obey is better than sacrifice. There's a lot that we could do or offer Jesus today, but if we're not offering our obedience, what are we doing? When you go to Luke 11, he says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. It's not enough to hear sermons and to hear great worship music. He said, I've given you the word of God. Now obey the word of God. Our obedience activates the power of God. The W in this acrostic is worship it's worship him the lord loves it when we worship him i believe worshiping god positions us to experience the power of god psalm 22 3 it tells us that that god lives and dwells in the midst of our praises i think about that every time we gather for worship i feel like i'm in the presence of god and we know where the presence of the lord is there is what there is freedom but there is also power The power of God is with us, dwelling among us, and he offers that power to us. The E here is expect, expect his blessings. You want to stay plugged into the power source? Then expect his power. I love Ephesians 3.20, one of my favorite verses in scripture. It says that God is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the what? To the power that works in us. It's talking about the power of God. It said, God is able to do anything he wants to do. Why? Because of his great power. And the same power he's talking about is the power he makes available to us, in us, and is available through us. So if we know that and believe that, then I believe we should expect great things from a great God. If he can do anything, then why wouldn't we expect him to do them? And so that's E. E is for expect. Last but not least is rejoice. The Bible says rejoice in all things. That's Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll say rejoice. When you're committed to rejoicing in the Lord through all circumstances, it allows you to walk in faith and experience God's power. Rejoicing in the Lord always is not only a command of God, it's something that positions you to experience the power of God. So you want to stay connected to the power source starting right now, then pray for his power. Obey his word, worship him, expect his blessings, and rejoice in all things. If our lives are going to be lived in the light, if our lives are going to make a difference, then number one, the light must be turned on, and number two, the light must have power. But let me give you one more before we land the plane here today. You ready? That light must also be displayed. It must be displayed. Look at the word one more time in Matthew chapter 5. He said, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives light for all who are in the house. Look at verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I learned this when I was a little boy. 
I learned it in Sunday school by singing a song where my Sunday school teacher said, put your finger in the air. Did you ever sing this song? I want you to sing it like you mean it. Ready? This little light of mine. Here we go. I'm going to let it shine. Y'all are louder. Come on. This little light of mine. <laughs> put your finger up. Amen. Come on. You got to go stronger than that on verse two. You ready? Hide it under a bushel. <laughs> My VBS crowd, come on. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Do y'all know verse three? I won't let Satan. It out. Oh, time out. I just heard it. No, somebody, how many of y'all just went? <laughs> y'all didn't sing blow it out. You just, you just spit all over your finger in the back of the person in front of me. Hey, let's sing that one. Ready? I won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it. Let, you can do louder. Come on. Won't let Satan. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. Hey, aren't you thankful that we grew up singing songs like that? Amen. Because the truth remains the same today. I'm going to let it shine. God said, you are a light. And if you know Jesus today, if you've been saved by Jesus today, you know why? It's because Jesus saved you. He turned that light on in your life. But you know what? It's the Holy Spirit who keeps that light on. He provides you with the power that you need. But you know what the Bible says? Even after all of that, what Jesus did, what the Holy Spirit is doing, even after all of that, you still have to decide if you're going to display that light or not. That's a decision that we have to make. See, according to Jesus, an undercover Christian is a disobedient believer. You say, Jordan, that's pretty strong language right there. It is strong, but they're not my words. This is what Jesus is saying in this text. He says it loud and clear. He said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. So why? So that others may see your good works and ultimately so they'll give glory to your father in heaven. Hey, don't miss what this is saying today. He doesn't command us to display our light so that we get the glory or so that people think we're special or so people will join our church. That's not what this is all about. He commands us to shine our light so that God will get glory through our life. Listen, when people look at your life, they should say, wow, he's different. She's different. They should say that about you, but they should also wonder, what is it that makes them different? Why are they so different from everyone else? Where does their light come from? You know, in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9, it says, the light of the righteous shines brightly not dimly but brightly you want to know if your life is counted among the righteous today then i'd encourage you to consider two simple questions are you ready the first one is my light shining brightly is my light shining brightly but then i want you to ask the second question and that is this when my light does shine who gets the glory when my light does shine who gets the glory Hey, mark it down. When my light shines, God should get the glory. You know, there are all kinds of people throughout the Bible who modeled what this should look like. I think about Lois and Eunice, the grandmother and the mother of Timothy. You know, in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, it says that they taught Timothy the scriptures from infancy is what the Bible says. And yet you think about that influence and them making a difference in his life and how we're still being influenced by it today. Lydia in Acts chapter 16, she was a businesswoman whose heart was open for the Lord. And the Bible says that God used that woman to lead her entire family to Jesus. The deacons made a difference in Acts chapter six. How did they do that? By, by resolving a conflict in the church. But it was more than, than just resolving conflict for resolving conflict's sake. No, the Lord used those efforts to set up a great movement of God. I think about Hannah and how she made a difference through her persistence and through her prayer. She didn't give up on God, but she continued to pray. And God ended up giving her a son after hearing those prayers, Samuel. And Samuel ended up being a great prophet of God that was used mightily by him. I think about Stephen, the first Christian martyr. And even through his death, the light of Jesus was shining. 
Acts 11, 19 says, because of Stephen, the saints scattered. And you think about it, when the saints scattered, that was the beginning of the gospel spreading and the great commission being fulfilled. You think about a guy named Peter, who, whose light was shining in a lot of ways, but I think about him preaching the gospel in Acts chapter 2, when the Bible says that God used Peter in that sermon to lead 3,000 people to the Lord in one single day. These are just normal people. This is a grandmother and a mother and a businessman and a handful of deacons and a discouraged wife and a faithful saint and a common preacher that God used to shine the light of Jesus and to make a difference in the world around us. Listen, if you have the light of Jesus and if you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you have zero excuses why your life can't be used in a great way. So just go through the checklist and ask the question. Number one, do I have the light of Jesus in my life? Yes or no? Do I have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of who I am? Then you have zero excuses why your life can't make a difference in a great way. Some people say, well, I, I can't be used because of this or because of that. I've even heard some people say, I'm too young to be used by God. I'm still in middle school or high school. I've even heard I'm too old to be used by God. God's finished with me and he can't use me. Can I just say this clearly? If your heart is beating and your lungs are breathing, God not only wants your life to make a difference, God expects your life to make a difference. Amen. About a week ago, I put a post on Facebook kind of thinking in that same vein. And this is what I put. I said, stop using your age as an excuse. At any age, you can serve the Lord. Would you agree with that today? At any age, you can show up, you can share your faith, you can encourage someone, you can share what you know. At any age, you can be a friend to someone new, you can help meet a need, you can pray bold prayers, you can give sacrificially. At any age, you can walk by faith. I ended it by saying, you're not done until you're dead. Can I get an amen from somebody? Hey, check your pulse real quick. Get two fingers and check it. I mean, put a hand on your gut. Just make sure you're breathing today. I'm looking at a crowd right now. I'm asking, is everybody good? Y'all here? Everybody alive? Check on your neighbor real quick. You said, Jordan, I'm here, man. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm engaged. I'm with it. Can I tell you something? Then today's message is for you. Jesus isn't talking to everybody else. He's talking to you. And this is what he said, you, my friend, you, ma'am, you, teenager, you, senior adult, you, businessman, you, college student, you are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. He said, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven. The question I want you to consider is this. Has Jesus saved you? Has he turned on the light in your life? You say, Jordan, I've never had that moment. I've never given my life to Jesus and been saved. I've lived in darkness my entire existence, but I want to know him. I want to be a child of God. I want the light of Christ to come in my life. Then I want to invite you right now to ask Jesus to save you to forgive you of your sins, to become your Lord and your Savior, and to change you from the inside out. Today can be the day of salvation in your life. Has Jesus saved you and turned the light on? If so, may I ask you, is the Holy Spirit powering your light today? Are you staying connected to the power source? Are you displaying the light of Jesus with your life? Is God getting the glory from your story? Because he doesn't just give you the light so that you can be changed. He gives you that light so you can let it shine and so that your life can make a difference in the world today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Listen, today may be a day of salvation for some. It may be a day of, of just rem being reminded of our purpose for others. But I encourage you to take a moment and to consider what the Lord is asking you to do today. Jesus, today I pray for this time of invitation, this response. I pray that it would be something that glorifies your name. Lord, get to, give us hearts that long to obey you, to be found in the center of your will. God, use us to make a difference in the world. 
And God, I just pray for every person here today. God, help us to not be satisfied with mediocrity. Help us to not be okay with being dim in the darkness. But give us hearts that long to make a difference by being the light of the world that you've called us to be. Give us voices that get louder. Give us influences that grow stronger. Give us relationships that have great purpose. And Lord, allow us to be found on mission with you and and for you every single day. God, this is bigger than our occupation. It's bigger than our influence. It's a matter of obedience. And I pray that we will obey you right now and in the days to come. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This episode of All In with Pastor Jordan Easley has been made possible by the generous support of viewers like you. We hope and pray for God to speak to you today as you seek to live your life all in for Jesus Christ. Begin your day with a burst of inspiration and a guiding light on your spiritual expedition. Introducing the All In Daily Devotional Email. Each devotional is crafted thoughtfully, drawing from the wisdom of Scripture and from the individual Bible study of Pastor Jordan Easley. By subscribing to receive this free daily email, you'll never miss a devotional. Simply check your inbox each morning and let the words of hope and encouragement uplift you. Take a moment every day to pause, ponder, and connect with something greater than yourself. Signing up is effortless and swift. Just visit our website at goallin.tv and locate the user-friendly sign-up form. Begin each day with restored hope and a deeper connection to the divine. Register for the free all-in devotional email today and let the power of God's word guide you every step of the way. Amidst the challenges in our world, there are moments that reignite our faith and remind us of the profound power of compassion. At All In with Pastor Jordan Easley, we are committed to bringing hope to those who need it most, but we can't do it alone. We rely on the generosity and kindness of people like you to continue our mission of spreading the timeless gospel of Jesus Christ to every corner of the earth. Today, we humbly ask for your financial support. No matter what amount you can give, your donation will make a profound difference in the lives of those who are searching for a connection with Jesus. With your help, we will be able to continue producing and distributing our weekly television program, bringing hope to lost people all over the world. Join us now by donating safely and securely at goallin.tv. Thank you for your support and for being a beacon of hope in this world.